Pong really isn't Pong without an opponent. So let's go ahead and create an AI that will try to defeat us at our own game. By now you should be a bit familiar with the process of creating a new file. We are going to create one for the AI, called AI.lua. Inside of here we will create a table named AI that will contain all of the variables and functions that it will need. We also need to create the three base functions, load, update and draw. These three functions need to be called in main.lua. And lastly we need to require AI.lua. The AI is going to be very similar to the player. We will need to keep track of the X and Y positions. It will have a width and height as well as a speed variable. One thing to keep in mind is that your program is read and executed from the top and then down. Meaning that if you declare a variable at line 6 but use it at line 5, your program is going to crash. This is because the variable has not yet been created when you try to use it. I want to use the AI's width when determining the AI's X position. Due to this we need to make sure that we have declared the width variable before we try to use it in the X variable. The AI is going to have the same dimensions as the player. So we create a width variable and set it to be equal to 20 and a height variable that we set to be equal to 100. The player paddle is offset by 50 pixels from the left side of the window and we want the AI to mirror that. In order for us to set the AI paddle to be 50 pixels offset from the right side of the window we need to set the X variable to be equal to the window width, minus the AI's width and minus another 50. We can set the Y variable to be equal to the window height divided by 2. The AI paddle has one similarity with the ball. They are both not controlled by any input. So we need to store the velocity that the AI has. But for the AI paddle, we only need to make a variable for the Y velocity, since the paddles can only move along the Y axis. I will set it to be equal to 0, so that the AI does not move right off the bat. Next we need to give the AI a speed variable. I will set it to be equal to 500, the same speed that the player paddle has. Let's go ahead and draw the AI. Inside of AI draw, we are going to once again use the love.graphics.rectangle function. We want the rectangle to be filled, so we type fill as the first argument, followed by the X and Y variables. Finally, we need to give it a width and height. Now we can see that the AI paddle exists and is drawn properly. We want the AI paddle to change its Y position depending on its current velocity. To do this we will create a function and name it move. Inside of the move function we will set the Y position to be equal to whatever the Y position was plus the Y velocity multiplied by delta time. This move function needs to be called in the update function. But the AI paddle won't move unless it can actually change the Y velocity variable. To make the AI able to do this we need to create a new function named acquire target. This function will handle the decision making of the AI, though it will be very basic. If the ball is above the paddle, it will set the Y velocity to negative speed, thus moving up. If the ball is below the paddle, it will set the Y velocity to be equal to the speed variable, making it move downwards. And finally, if the ball is neither above nor below, it will set the Y velocity to be equal to zero. To accomplish this, we are going to create an if statement, checking if the ball's Y position plus height is smaller than the AI's Y position. If this is true, then we will set the Y velocity to be equal to negative speed. Next we will create an else if statement, checking if the ball's y position is greater than the AI's y position, plus height. Finally we can do an else statement to catch the situations when the ball is neither above nor below, and when this is the case we simply set the y velocity to be equal to zero. Remember to call the acquire target function in the update function. Now the AI is doing a really good job tracing the ball. It's just a little bit too good. It's actually impossible to beat it currently. To make the AI a little bit more mortal and beatable, we will make a delay between each decision that it gets to make. We will make it only able to call the acquire target function every half a second. To accomplish this, we need to create two new variables for the AI. A timer variable that I will set to be equal to zero and a rate variable that I will set to be equal to 0.5. Inside of the update function we are going to update the timer by typing timer equal to whatever the timer was plus delta time. 
This will make the timer count upwards in real time. Now we can create an if statement that checks if the timer is greater than the rate. If this is the case, then we will set the timer back to zero in order to reset it and call the acquire target function. Now the acquire target function is not being called every single frame, but rather twice per second. And as you can see, it makes a huge difference in how the AI behaves. However, it is currently not able to return the ball to us because it lacks collision with the ball. So let's go ahead and fix that. To make the AI collide with the ball, we need to head over to the ball.lua file. Inside of the collision function, we can go ahead and copy the code that we wrote for the player. Because it is going to function almost identically. All we need to do is change player to be AI in the if statement. And then change the local variable middle player to middle AI. And setting that variable to be equal to the AI.y plus AI.height. And finally, we need to set the X velocity of the ball to be negative speed because we want the ball to travel back towards the player. If we run the game now, we can see that the AI is able to deflect the ball back to us. Now that we can actually play the game, we need to handle what happens if the ball hits the left or right side of the window. The way we check this is very similar to the code that checks if the ball hits the top or bottom side of the window. First we will check if the AI has managed to get the ball past us. To do this we make an if statement that checks if the ball.x position is smaller than zero. If this is the case we want to set the ball back to the center of the screen. So we set the ball's x position to be equal to the screen width divided by 2. Minus half of the ball's width. Next we set the y position to be equal to half of the screen's height minus half of the ball's height. Finally we want to set the y velocity of the ball back to zero and the x velocity to be equal to the speed variable in order to make it go in a straight line towards the AI. To handle when the player scores, we need to check if the ball's x position plus width is greater than the window's width. And if this is the case, we will do the exact same thing as when the AI scored, resetting the ball back to the center and setting the y velocity to be equal to zero. The only difference is that we will set the ball's x velocity to be equal to negative speed, so that it will travel towards the player instead. That's it, you have made Pong, great job! In the next part we are going to polish it up a little bit, by giving it some graphical assets and cleaning up the code.